For this project, I'm going to use the contents that come in sub box six. That is your Spectrum Wire Aquamarkers box. So for this project, I've got myself four of the envelopes. So these are the um, four and a half by five and a half inch envelopes. And what I'm going to do with this is I like to make little technique books up when I get my colouring products. So I've got one here with the sparkle pens and the aqua tint pens, just to name just a few, with all those great techniques that you can do with them. So they're quite good as a reference to come back and look at time and again and things that we can use in our crafting because we do forget about them, this is the thing. So I thought what we'd do is we'll make a little technique book. Okay, and um, for this I'm going to do it as a sort of technique book come art journal book and I'm going to incorporate some pockets that we can put some little card toppers ready to go for those last minute cards that you're going to need. So to make the book itself you're going to need four of your envelopes and these are the four and a half by five and a half inch envelopes that come in your pack and the first thing we're going to do is to join two of these together. So let's put two of these together. So I'm just using my all purpose for this. I'm going to fold one of the envelopes back on itself and I'm keeping this one open and I'm going to put glue on this tab here so I'm just putting some of the all purpose okay so some all purpose on there and then I'm going to slide that inside this one that I've folded back so just slide in really carefully just making sure I've used the all-purpose so we've got that little bit of wiggle room if we need it. Okay, so just folding that back and then giving it a nice rub down with your hands or a burnish just so you know that glue's dispersed. So that's the first stage that you're going to do. So we've got already two little pockets that can be used. And if we fold this over, we've got another flap going on here. So I've got another envelope and this time I'm going to stick this flap inside this one. So I'm going to fold my flap back on itself and pop on some all-purpose and then slide that inside this envelope. So I'm popping that in, again giving that a little rub down so that's exactly where we want that to be. Okay and then the last thing I'm going to do is I've got my final envelope here so this is the front you open it up you've got two pockets you open it up again and you've got a blank page and a pocket so take your last envelope open it up and we're going to glue the flap inside there so glue on the closed part of the flap this time Okay, and then slide that in again. So in this actual piece, you've got two flaps on this last piece of the back page. Okay, some of my glue has dispersed there, but don't worry about that because we're going to stick some of that lovely watercolour card on here with those great techniques. So let me just rub that away. Being all purpose, we can rub that away while it's still wet so rubbing it away with your hand can you see it's not marking your project at all so do not worry about this that's why this is a brilliant glue to get your hands on if you can okay so that's all ready to go all right so what i need to do is to make some pages out of my watercolor card now to go on here and i'm going to show you a little bit of detail that we're going to put on this front page here so your watercolor card is eight by eight okay and I'm going to bring my guillotine in so I'm using my crafters companion guillotine so I'm going to cut up each sheet and you're going to need four sheets of your watercolor cardstock so first thing I want you to do is to cut down at five and a half inches and the nice thing with the guillotine is you've got the measurements all along the top and because you've got the grid, 
you can line your card stock up so you know it's exactly where it should be hold the bar and slice that with the guillotine pop this to one side because we'll be using that and that's your bit of scrap the next thing I want you to do is now turn it on the long side and I want you to do a cut at four and a quarter inches so lining that up again finger on the bar slice down so that one is four and a quarter inches by five and a half so four and a quarter across five and a half down and then the piece we've cut off is three and three quarters by five and a half and if you want to check that if you put your arm down butt it up so it's level there with the trimming mat or the trimming board and you'll see that comes in at three and three quarters and you're going to do that four times so you've got four different sheets okay so that's that bit done now I did say to you we're doing little um, something with this little tab here because this is the front of the project so I've got two of my scrap pieces here so I'm going to trim both of those down to five and a half as well so pop them back in the guillotine I'm going to cut the two together because this guillotine will there we go that's those two done and don't throw away this last little bit because we can use this to stamp on cut out and add to our journal pages I've got these two flaps here and I'm going to glue one on there and one on there and I'm going to attach some ribbon as a fastening okay so we'll look at doing that but before we do that as well this is going to be the flap or the spine of our little journal and what I've done is I've just given it an extra little fold I haven't done a score line I've just literally gone in with my fingers and done an extra little fold it's about about quarter of an inch probably okay so that's given that there and then I'm going to attach this here with a fastening so we can tie our book all together so let me go and get my ribbon ready for the fastening and then I'll show you how we're going to attach it I've just got some sort of hessian ribbon here like a very sort of blunt jupe ribbon but any ribbon will do this is just from my crafty stash this is about 18 inches long but probably going to be far too long for what we need but I've just made a little loop there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that onto that front piece of my envelope actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip off the point of my envelope because I don't need that so I'm going to snip that away and then I've just got some double sided tape and just make that loop again okay so I've got that nice loop there and then I'm going to just put some double sided tape on there to hold that in position take the backing off that I'm going to do a double layer there so we know it's going to stay fast because this is going to be something you're going to be coming to time and again and then I'm going to just pop some glue on here so this is another piece of our watercolor card so we can add a technique to this as well because this art journal I've never done art journaling before I have always looked at it I thought I'd like to give that a go and then when I saw the box I thought what a great way of doing something just a little bit different other than cards so we're going to make some card toppers and we're going to use lots of different techniques with our amazing aqua markers but I thought this is just a little bit of a different project to keep for yourself as reference or to give as a gift so I've got the second piece here as well and I'm just going to line those two pieces up together because that will make that a bit more substantial okay it's just give that a little bit of wiggle room if it has just pressing that down 
that's my little loop this can then wrap round the back pop through here I know it's not dry but you'll get the idea of what we're doing that's going to pop through there and then we can just tie that off with a knot so we've got plenty of ribbon here I said 18 inches is more than enough you're not going to need that length as you can see so probably even about um, 12 inches will be enough okay so that's how we're going to fasten that all right so let me just undo this so I want to show you where these mats are that I've already cut up so let's open our project up get this all undone it's all in uh, a knot there we go so we've got four sheets of the four and a quarter by five and a half and four sheets of the three and uh, three quarters the three and three quarter ones I'm actually going to stick in front of these envelope openings so they're going to be decorated up nicely but I can still get in here I bring one of the cards in I can still get in here for my flat to add some card toppers I thought we're going to pre-prep some card toppers so you've got two there you've got two big spaces here in the middle so this is where your bigger size mat is going to go so we can do some lovely big decorations on those and then we turn to the last two this is where your last two are going to go again so we've got those pockets to use and then on the back I'm going to put one of the big mats on the back there and then if I flip open to the front which we've got covered in watercolour cardstock as well I've got my last one that's going to go on there so we're going to do lots of different techniques on these so you can have this as a reference but before we start getting messy with our pens let's go ahead and create some card toppers or card blanks that are going to go in here now in your kit you also get beautiful coloured papers and I've got some more cardstock so I've got four different colour papers I'm just going to make four card toppers to go inside here okay I'm going to do one of each colour and then I've got my cardstock there as well okay so for each of the card toppers I'm just doing a rough size of colour cardstock which is going to measure five and a half by four and a half so let me just pop that in there and show you so five and a half by put that right the way up get that all nice and square four and a half so that's going to be one of them and then with your card stock your watercolor card stock which is under here you're going to need to cut four out your two sheets that's going to be five and a quarter so we're coming down that quarter of an inch so we've got a line all the way around and this is going to be by four and a quarter no four inches I beg your pardon it's going to be four inches okay so out of one sheet you can get two so when we bring these onto our card toppers we can make instant card toppers which is great okay and these will also fit move this all out the way so you can see these will also fit inside the little envelopes there ready to be used for decoration on your cards so that is my aim we're going to do art journal and card toppers so now I'm going to tidy all my nice bits of paper away so we can start getting messy with our pens and doing some techniques so what you're going to need is some watercolour brushes and water I've got some of my Spectrum Noir um, daubers and I'm going to put some ink pads on those okay and then I'm going to gather some other bits and pieces up I'm going to go through a few techniques really super quick 
just to show you what you can do with your pens. Right, we're all ready to have fun now with these marker pens. The marker pens can be used for colouring. Okay, and I'm going to show you this on... I've just stamped on here, on the inside pocket here, or the inside little flap of our project, just using the stamps that you've got in your sub box. And I've used the Finesse ink pads, and I've used Pebble. And I know it's going to be fine because it's got waterproof on there and it's got a watercolour brush. So I know once I start colouring with these, I'm not going to have a problem. So you can just go in and colour with your pens. Your pens come with two different nibs. Okay, you've got your um, paintbrush nib this end. But then you've also got this very fine watercolour or very fine tip brush this end. So this is great for sort of doing spirals off, doing some writing on here. You know, you can just have fun with these. Okay, so we can colour with these. We can go directly onto our projects and colour in, which is great. Okay, so if I just pop a bit of that on there, so we can colour with these. But you can also pop a little bit on your mat, go in with a fine paintbrush or finish paintbrush, pick up the colour, and then you can paint with these very nicely. So you get a softer look because all these colours can be diluted down. This is why you don't get many of the aqua markers because you can shade down with these. You don't need to have all the gradients of colour. So I'm just dragging that colour out. It's going to add a little bit more water. Because we're using watercolour card, it's not going to buckle or warp either. Because we've used the correct ink pad as well for the project, it's not going to run, as you can see. So if I bring in some blue down here, okay, just add that on there. Going directly in, back in with my paintbrush and just spread that about. And then if I want to add some more, picking it up off my glass mat and I can make that colour a little bit stronger as well. Okay, so just by picking up those colours we can get those all nicely in. But don't just think there. These are a watercolour project product. We can colour mix. So we can put a bit of blue and we put a bit of yellow and you know what that's going to make. Add some water and pick the two colours up together. And we've got a lovely green. So we didn't have green in our box, but we can create green. So this is the nice thing about these. You can be in control of the colours that you want to add. You know, so you can mix, colour mix with these. You can have really great fun with these. So it's nice just to add the water and drag the colour out. So this is just one of the techniques you can do. Okay, and don't forget that really fine nib on there to do those lovely squirrels or to add your writing or to do your doodle lines. You know, there's so many things you can do with these pens. Please, please do not think they are just for colouring in because you can do so much more than colouring in with them. So that it's just showing you that you can colour in with them in different ways. But now let's do something else. We'll pop that to one side to dry. So let's bring one of our sheets in. Okay, this is one of our bigger sheets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a lot of colour on the top there. And this is going to just, we're going to do a blend now. Going in again with my big fat brush. And I'm just doing sweeping motions across the cardstock. So just sweeping it across. Okay, I've got a bit of 
glue mess there okay so we're doing sweeping motions across so we can do a gradual blend but let's bring in a bit of darker color down here you know have fun with these because you will really enjoy using them and the fact they come in the sub box if this isn't a product you've already got you are going to have so much fun with it and i'm sure you'll end up getting more but we can blend them together okay so we can go in and add more water because we're using a watercolor cardstock it's not going to buckle or warp it's the right product and the right paper for the right job so we can do these lovely color blends so let's pop that to one side to dry let me just wipe that up now let me show you another thing we can do so we can get our pens and this is where glass mat or craft mat comes in handy you might not see it very easily on there but I'm just doing big blobs of the colors okay so just trying to get that in and again if you worry that you've contaminated and gone over onto one of the others don't worry about it because just give your the, the nib of the, the pen a little scribble out on a piece of paper and you'll be fine so I've got a nice mess going on there so I'm going to bring in my water spray okay you can get hold of these on the um, on the website as well so these are the spectrum wild water sprays just going to spritz a little bit of water can you see what's happening now it's activating it it's all starting to move okay so if I come back in again with one of my card stocks make sure you've got the right side pop that on the top okay let that just take up the color it's just soaking up that color lift it across and wow look what you've got and then what you can do is you can do what's called mop up and you can just go around and add some more of the color okay so I'm going to pop that to one side to dry and use in our book later and in fact got a couple of little scraps here as well I'm going to pick up that last little bit okay because it's called mopping up for a reason so I'm just mopping all this up because I could stamp over this I can die cut with this there's just so many different things we can do with them okay so let's just pop that onto there so I'm going to pop those to one side to dry now something else we can do is I've got here my blending tools okay because we can use them like we would ink pads in a way so I'm going to put a clean one on there and a clean one on there and I've got some glycerin here lots of you have been using the glycerin I know so I'm going to put a blob of glycerin there and a blob of glycerin on there I'm going to pick up a couple of these stronger colors I think I'm going to go for the blue so I'm going to just put lots and lots and lots on my mat it looks like lots but actually when I'm when I'm rubbing it out here it's not and then we'll go in with the the pink as well now I've got two of my blending tools I've got one for each color so I bring in a piece of my watercolor card pick up my glycerin pick up the color and go directly on so we can use them like we would a regular ink pad okay and if I pick up the next color so I've got a different ink pad for each color so pick up that blue and blend that in this gives it a softer look because the glycerin is going to dilute that down it gives it a softer look but this is great because we can then add on to that and that's what art journaling is all about is building up the layers and adding on but you can see how nicely they blend together so we can blend them with our glycerin so let's pop that to one side I'm just doing bases here because we're going to add to these bases 
with some more techniques there's just so many techniques to do but we're not going to get them all done today right another one I wanted to show you quickly is we're going to do some blotting let's bring in the pink here let's have some lines this time and the blue get the right end I want the nice juicy end okay and this time I'm just going to use some regular, just some sea salt, okay? So this is just regular sea salt out the kitchen cupboard. Okay, so pop that on there. Spritz with some water. Get it activated there. Make sure you've got your card stock the right way around. Blot that over the top again and let the, the water soak in okay lift that across or take that off i'm going to spritz it actually i'm going to pick up i'm going to do a bit of mopping up around here because i've got a few white spaces i'm now going to sprinkle with some of the sea salt okay so i'm using the sea salt because you've got nice big crystals and then i'm going to spritz again with some more water and what will happen is the salt will take up the colour and the crystals in the salt will go into the project so you get a fantastic look now we can't force dry this with a heat gun this is one that does really have to be put aside to dry overnight so let me pop that to one side to dry let me just clear this up I wouldn't normally do this I'd be mopping up with another piece of paper but I want to move on and show you something else with these and in fact I'm going to give this a little dry with my mat because we're going to do a similar thing again now but this time we're going to use some cling film because I love doing this technique it still fascinates me that once it's dry none of the colour is left on the cling film I just think it's absolutely amazing so squiggles of colour lots of water piece of your watercolour card let that soak that up I've got my piece of just household cling film here all scrunched up so I've got all those nice textures going on there okay let's just make sure we've got lots of lovely color in there yes okay and then i'm going to get my cling film i'm not opening it up fully i'm going to just lay it on in fact i'm going to spritz with a little bit more water quickly first because this does work better with the water and then i'm just going to lay this on can you see how you're scrumpling it up this is the texture that you're going to get afterwards that's why it's good to do when it's really wet again this is something you can't force dry with your heat gun because you melt all your cling film so just pop that one side to dry and that will dry in about half an hour so let's pop that to one side so that's another great technique we can do let's look at a resist technique so on here, I don't know whether you can quite see it, I've stamped that beautiful big butterfly that you've got in your stamp sets on there. Okay, and I'm going to do a colour wash over it. So I'm going to take, let's have some of the blue. And we're going to have some of the yellow this time. Okay big brush again picking up that blue got a bit of my pink still left on there it's made it a little bit purple look by oh, the color washing and then bringing up that yellow if you need a bit more water get some more water and then what I'm going to do at the bottom I'm going to mix the two together and see if I can get a green down here yeah very subtle it is so this is what's called a resist technique so where I've got my stamped image you're not going to see the the um, marker or the ink cannot attach to it 
so I'm just going to set that aside to dry I don't want to heat dry that otherwise I'm going to lose this is just going to reactivate my heat embossing okay so let me show you that one again because I've done one for the front cover on the front cover is I've just stamped three of the little ones this time so let's go in with the pink this time because we had the other ones last time so a big blob of pink big brush lots of water and just do that color wash all the way over it never fails to fascinate me this this technique I love this technique so just going in with the right ink pad again I've used my watermark ink pad from Harmony and I've just used some white embossing powder to stamp well, I've stamped with my watermark heat embossed with the white embossing powder and then I've done that lovely colour wash there now we can take this a little step further if we get the blue here I don't want it on that side of my image so I'm going to put a little scrap of paper there okay go in with a very wet brush pick up that blue try to put it so you can see it pick up the blue and then just tap in just go in with your paintbrush and just have fun with this it's just absolutely great and if we want some more ink we can bring some more ink in off our pen just pick that up with that nice wet brush and what a lovely technique that brings so that's just a few of the techniques to get started and then I'm going to come back in a minute and we're going to add on to what we've already done and start building up these art journal pages I've started to add some of the finished pages that I've done so this was the little panel at the front here where we did the resist okay and then on the other side here I've coloured the flowers this is one of the panels I did this is a resist um, butterfly again just done with white embossing powder a colour wash over I've actually stamped here with um, the stamps using my aqua markers if I bring the stamps in here um, it was these ones here that I used and then what I've also done is I cut one of the little elements off there that was off one of those bigger lots there so just let me show you how I stamped that so just going in with your aqua markers and if you brush on the side of your nib you won't damage your nib okay and if you work quite quickly if you're a bit slow I just give it a little huff with your breath and then what you can do is you can just stamp your image directly onto your page okay so we can always also use our aqua markers for stamping so let me just pop that little piece back I've had fun on the inside here as you can see so these are the smaller panels so we've still got our pockets in here so this was using an acrylic block okay so all I've done is I've just um, used my aqua markers onto an acrylic block now you do have to use a flat acrylic block for this you can't use your rocker blocks so just inking them up and then stamping the color directly onto your watercolor card and then I've gone over the top here with my um, my finesse ink pads so I've used the flagstone one on that so that's quite dark and then I've just stamped a nice image on there and also some of the other stamps on this side I've actually stamped the flower image okay I've just lost that little one again let me pop that up there stamp the flower image and I've actually gone in with my pens just by popping a little bit on your mat and going in with your watercolor brush to stamp that off going in with your watercolor brush and just colouring the image in and the, to make the green obviously because we've got some fairly primary colours here I've used the blue and the yellow to make my green leaves 
okay so I've just made them a little bit darker than the background that I've used so that's a couple of other pages I've done on the background here I've just used the card that we put the glycerin on as the background I've just stamped my images this time with the pebble colour okay which is a bit browner okay so I've stamped those and then I've just stamped some of these on my watercolour card and coloured them in with my aqua markers and then stuck that on the back so let me show you some other things I've been doing while um, I was off camera these are some of the cards or card toppers that I've made to go on the inside so I've done just four because I've got the four pockets so I've done this one which is similar to that one so that can be popped into that pocket just there so let me just pop that one in there I've done one here with the pink again stamping with my aqua markers and here all I've done is gone in with some washi tape masked off the area done a colour wash with my aqua markers and then stamped over the top afterwards so that one can pop into here so it's just quite nice it's a little bit of a different art journal normally art journals you're you're stenciling and you're putting um, your gesso on there and building the layers up so I wanted to do it just with what I've got in the subscription box so here again I've um, I've heat embossed my butterfly and done a colour wash and then I've done some faux bleaching over the top of that and some splatters so that's a nice little card topper just ready to add to a card whenever I need it so that can go in that pocket there and then here what I've done is I've actually stamped with my butterfly so this is that really big butterfly again which is gorgeous if you pop it onto your block ink with your the fat side of the brush ink all the elements stamped it onto my watercolor card and then I spritzed with my water spritzer and then you get to a stage where you you don't want it to go any further and then just heat dry it so it doesn't travel any further so that's how I did that technique there so that can pop in that pocket so I've got my four card toppers done okay so I've got a couple of more pages to fill in let's have a look at these middle pages here and show you a couple of the techniques I was going to do so got a couple of them in fact before we start let's have a look at the salt technique that we did remember we did the salt technique right at the beginning okay so this is our salt technique I've left this overnight to dry and can you see how it started to the, the ink takes on the crystals and the crystals take on the ink so let me pop a piece of kitchen paper down here and then when it's dry some will fall off some won't so just rub it with your thumb okay just give that a good rub with your thumb or your fingers just to release the salt so it's releasing those crystals okay so just giving that a good rub some will stay stuck to the background that's not a problem but when you're coming to um, ink over the top you may just have to watch that there okay so just pulling that off with my nail but you can look at the effect that you get and actually you know, I don't think the camera can quite pick it up but it does look slightly glistening -y, a bit like if we've been using our sparkle pens on there as well and the, because we've used quite pale colours you might be able to see it but the actual salt has taken up the colour so I wouldn't even throw that salt away I keep the salt coloured salt like this for things like shaker cards because I think it's just perfect for that so I'm going to pop that to one side because I will be using that another time so let's have a little quick look at what I've been doing here before I carry on just to show you a few more techniques you can do with your pens so this is a butterfly here and all I've done with this is go directly in with my pens so I'm colouring directly onto the watercolour card just with my pens there you've got this nice brush nib okay so don't be afraid to just have a go don't worry if you go over the lines at all it's all about having fun and this is what crafting is about and this is why the watercolour products 
I really enjoy using because there's so much you can actually do with them. So let's come in with this one now. And again, don't be afraid to move your project around to suit you. The thing is, you've got to be comfortable with it. You don't always have to have it square on your page or on your mat. Okay, so just having a little colour there just to colour that butterfly. And then I'll show you what I did with the other end of the brush because you've got this lovely brush nib on these pens which is great so let me just finish this side off to show you and the colours are really vibrant when you go and use them directly onto your page and as we add water obviously that dilutes them down but um, you can see how vibrant the colours are now here, what I've done is I've got blue on this side. In fact, a little bit of white there showing. Let me just colour that in. I've used the fine nib of the pen. And I've just come in on the edge. You'll see on the stamp there's some little hashed dark tones. So I've just come in with my pink colour. And when you add the pink to the blue you then get a purple colour. So this is why the colours have been picked for the subscription box because this means you can mix up other colours you want to do which is absolutely great. So it has been thought out. We haven't got colours that we can't colour mix. So and then again just light flicks with that fine nib from the centre to just give a little bit of detail to that butterfly but even just colouring with your pens is great fun so I thought with this one that's it I've done here so with this technique this, this was the background that we used where we did what we call mop up or we did the squiggles on the mat with the spray let that dry and then I've gone in just directly with my aqua markers and stamped a few butterflies and then I think this one is going to look just perfect on there. In fact, I think I need just a couple of more butterflies. So let me just stamp a couple of more to show you. Let's go with the smaller one here. So I've got the, oh, don't need the fine end, I need the brush end. Okay, so using the side of the brush or your nib, I call it a brush because it is a brush nib. So, and because it's a watercolour product, it does act very much like a brush. So just ink up your stamp. And then let's pop one on there. And then just going in with your rock block and see how you get that lovely image. And I'm going to pop one more of those pink ones just down the bottom there. So straight away, the pens that you've got in your subscription box also become ink pads. So there's so much versatility with the aqua marker. So if it isn't a product you've tried before, it's a great way of trying it. But look at the great effects that you can have. So I'm going to stick my big butterfly on there. So that's going to go onto there. I've done another layout here where I've I've stamped the butterflies, and again I've gone in with my pen and coloured in which you can do over here and then these are the stamps where I've stamped first generation and second generation as well so that's another page and then I've got this dream one here and I thought I'd do something a little bit different with this I thought I'd do an ombre effect so because I want to pop it onto there I think what I'm going to do is I might go in with the yellow actually because it's quite vibrant so I'm going to go in with the yellow nib and I'm just going to brush halfway up directly on to the words so this is going to give it a quite a strong color okay so this will give an ombre effect and these are the die cut words that come in the subscription box as well so you've got all of these lovely words and then if I bring my paintbrush in not too wet I'm going to then put some of my pen onto the glass mat and just 
colour that through so you get a nice ombre word okay so I think that looks lovely so that's an ombre effect so you can quite easily do that so I've got my graduated blend that we did here at the beginning so I think that can go onto there and then I've die cut well I haven't die cut I've cut out fussy cut out with my scissors these are some of the flower stamps that you've got and you remember we had that scrap paper I've even fussy cut out the leaves as well to go on to here so they can go on there so we can bunch all those up in the corner so I'll stick all those onto there okay so that's another layout we could do and then on the salt one I've cut out the other words here in a different colour and I'm going to pop those onto there and I'm going to stamp something up there and I've fussy cut some more I made up a green by mixing my colours okay so just need to shape those and add some green leaves so again doing a colour wash on a card um, and then I just fussy cut those out so they go on there quite nicely so I'm going to finish off my last few pages and then I'll come back to you and show you our finished art journal come card topper storage with our subscription box six so I'll see you in just a minute so my little art journal card topper is all complete so I've made this using all the elements from subscription box six the only thing I've added is some of the finesse ink pads that are watercolored and obviously the watermark ink pad as well with some white embossing powder so the rest of this apart from the ribbon is from the box so let's open this up and have a look inside so if we just undo this so it's a little art journal not an art journal as people would know but it's my little take on an art journal and something that you can quite easily do with your sub box six so i've got the heat embossed butterflies here with the color wash background and some splattering with the ink so this is really just showing you all the techniques or some of the techniques i should say that you can do with your aquamarker pens so we've got some color washing here we've colored them in we've used the fine nib of the pens as well to do these doodle lines so here's another um, gradual color wash background with the heat embossed butterfly and then I've taken some of the colour out just with a plain uh, water on a brush and then recoloured in with the pens stamping with the pens as well with the stamps that we've got in our kit on the other side here I've done the acrylic block technique which is colouring with your pens onto acrylic blocks and then stamping with the versifying ink your images and stuff just with your stamps one of the card toppers in here you've got little pockets in here is a similar image so this is a card topper ready to go so that for those cards that you just need last minute so that's why it's quite a nice little place to store them in there and then i've got the stamped images again here i've, I've again colored in with the aqua markers with that brush and then on this one we've done the stamping i've used a washi tape to take out um like use as a mask and do a color wash effect over the top so that's another little quick card topper all ready to go in there we've used the words that we've got in the kit as well so i've just done an ombre colored effect with the words when i did a mop up with some of the scrap watercolor card that i've done i've actually stamped some of the flowers and fussy cut them out i've made my own green to do the leaves got my doodle line going on here I've done the colour wash background. This was the mop up background that we did here with where we put all the colours on the mat, spritz with water and mop them up. And then I've stamped the butterflies and then we've cut, fussy cut out and coloured in that big butterfly there for the centrepiece. Again, this is the uh, cling, cling film technique on this side. This is the cling film technique. And our first and second generation, the stamps, 
stamp the butterflies and colour those in directly with the pens and the topper in here is the heat embossed butterfly just with some faux bleaching on the background and some colour splatting so another quick card topper ready to go in there here was the salt technique the one I just showed you where we took the salt off I've, I've again used my pens to stamp the images made up my green and then with a dry paintbrush popped that onto my stamped images before I've stamped them and then I've inked around the edge by again just popping some of this colour on here just take some of the colour from your pens onto your mat with your blending tool okay and just to go around the edge so another little technique there you can use and then this one is stamping with the big butterfly so colouring in that big stamp with your pens and then spritzing that with the water spritzer okay and then when you're happy with it drying it with a heat gun so that's another card topper in there ready to go so let me pop that in there in its little pocket and then on the back here we've got we did the background with the glycerin stamped with our images just using the finesse ink pads and then I've stamped again and then colored in with my pens so it's a little art journal book of techniques or some of the techniques you can do with your pens along with some little card toppers ready to go there it's just a lovely little project and I think it just reminds us of all the techniques that we can do with these Aquamarker pens this is just some of them you can make a bigger book and put all of them in but there's lots of techniques out there these are great pens not just for colouring you can do all sorts of things with them and I'm sure you're going to enjoy doing them as well if you do make anything that we've done here today do share it over on the subscription box Facebook page we'd love to see what you've been up to and thank you very much for watching